Welcome back to another video this is a part 12 of. What if Issei fell in love with Sona after Rias broke his heart? I don't really want to drag out the intro so let's get started. Chapter 45, Sona's Chance, a high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 45, Mom, Dad, I'm a Devil, Scene, Kyoto Home, Kuo Japan. Alright, now that everyone has a cup of tea, hot chocolate in my granddaughter's case, hee <laughs> hee, well, let's hear about everything. I want to know how the two of you met. I want to know about little Kuno over here. Mickey Hyodo was now softly patting the head of little Kuno as the fox princess blushed while taking a sip of her hot cocoa. Then, finally, Issei's mother began to notice something. Feeling a pair of pointy and soft ears, Mrs. Hyodo took a closer look. Sweetheart, are these some kind of costume? Kuno looked nervous now, however Yusaka spoke up. Mother, father, Yusaka looked at both of Issei's parents while continuing to maintain her graceful mannerism. My daughter and I are fox spirits. Yes, I am sure what I am saying seems a bit outlandish, however it is the truth. Standing up from her seat next to Issei, Yusaka first bowed politely and then proceeded to move all nine of her tails, dancing them back and forth. Kuno also flickered her ears a bit. She was expecting her grandmother to back away as most humans do at first. That isn't what happened, in fact, Mrs. Hyodo, and now, Mr. Hyodo were both patting the fox princess on her head while watching her ears move with intrigue. How did I not notice something this adorable from the moment I saw you, dear? Of course you're a fox, aw so cute. Issei's mother continued to dote on her grandchild as Mr. Hyodo simply smiled and nodded. Issei tilted his head in disbelief. Really, that's all you guys have to say. I mean, don't you have questions? Why aren't you freaking out? Yusaku looked speechless as Sona and Seraphal both had perplexity written on their faces. Meanwhile, the Grimori peerage sat silently while sipping on their hot tea, however Asia looked extremely uncomfortable. Yes, Issei, that's really all there is to say. Marrying a fox spirit, yes that is very interesting and I cannot wait to hear more about it. But right now, I must admit, I am very curious as to how Yusaka-san and you met. Mrs. Hyodo now took a sip of her tea with one hand as her other was resting on Kuno's head. Issei took a glance toward Yusaka, then Seraphal and finally, Sona. Instantly, Yusaka could understand what her husband was silently asking. Issei-kun, would you please start this conversation off? Perhaps explain to your parents of what you really are. Yusaka continued to smile warmly. Both of the Hyodo parents looked toward Issei with questioning looks. Standing up nervously, Issei looked at Akino, then Kiba. After a silent nod from all involved, Issei moved his attention toward Kaneko, which only lasted for less than a second, as the flustered Red Dragon Emperor finally laid his eyes upon Asia Argento. Asia's agitation seemed to lessen the longer the two stared at one another. Finally, eye contact was broken and Issei's attention was now on his parents. Mom, Dad, um, well considering how well you took the news of Yusaka and Kuno being fox spirits, I thought I should tell you that, well, I'm kind of a devil. Issei closed his eyes tightly at the end of his sentence. Both Mr. and Mrs. Hyodo looked at one another with looks of bewilderment. Then Mr. Hyodo cracked a small smile and began to laugh out loud. FWA ha 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 ha. Okay, that's really funny son, but seriously, a devil. I get it. I get it, you're just trying to lighten the mood, but I assure you son, there's no need, so please, let's get back to how the two of you met and then, mouth drooping to the floor, Issei's father was now gobsmacked at what he was looking at. Standing next to his wife, Issei's devil wings were now extended as his eyes were still glued shut, meanwhile Yusaka was now patting the hunched over and nervous teen on his head. Mrs. Hyodo points toward Issei while using her other arm to pull Kuno closer into her, as if protecting her from something demonic. Issei, this is what happens when you read those naughty magazines from those perverted friends of yours. All of this is because of your own debauchery. My son, a devil. Oh dear, Mrs. Hyodo was fake crying about the situation. Meanwhile Mr. Hyodo looked at the other girls that accompanied his son. Both C3 sisters are staring back at him. Then, as if on cue, Sona and Seraphal both release their own pairs of wings as they casually sip on their tea. 
Both Hyodo parents are stunned to say the least. Then Akino clears her throat. Instantly the Grimori peerage all released their wings as well. What? Wait. All of you are, um, devils. Mrs. Hyodo was practically heaving in and out. This whole time, Akino, Kaneko, Asia. Okay, give me a moment to understand what's going on. Miki Hyodo was usually a very strong woman who could take surprises like no other, but this was asking a bit too much of her. It's, um, it's not my fault. Mom, Dad, it's not my fault. Issei had his head lowered and because of that, his eyes were hidden by thick and brown strands of hair. Yasaka moves her hand from his head and now onto his shoulder. Her smile was also gone and replaced with a very attentive expression. Go on ahead, my darling, I'm right here. Mr. Hyodo spoke up with a stern look in his eyes. What do you mean, son? Did somebody force you into all of this? Tell me. Issei flinched for a moment, then suddenly he felt angry. I died, dad, I was killed, I be, be, bled to death, back in Kuo Park. Everyone in the room didn't move a muscle or even make the slightest noise. All eyes, widened in shock for different reasons, were on Issei. It's really stupid actually. A girl, no, a monster, she killed me and instead of passing on, I became a devil. Rias, she's my, mm master, Issei got very quiet suddenly. After a few moments, Mrs. Hyodo was about to speak up, that was until Sona stood from the table. What your son failed to mention was that he didn't choose to become a devil, rather, in a way, it was forced upon him due to circumstances. Sona said this very matter of factly, Issei had the choice to either die or be resurrected as a devil, to serve the house of Grimori. Also, I am your son's, erm, girlfriend, Sona Sitri, I apologize for all of this trouble. Sona politely bows. Seraphal began to laugh. Satan, how bold. I never knew you had it in you. Sona began to lose her composure and blush. After getting the desired reaction from her little sister, Seraphal jumped up from her seat and threw an arm into the air. Salutations, mom and dad. My name is Seraphal Leviathan and I'm also Issei's girlfriend. What? Issei, you have multiple relationships going on. Issei's mother was continuously looking around the room at each person aside from her husband. Issei's attitude changed from dismal to now embarrassed. Um, yeah, I sort of have a... Sona looked livid suddenly, pointing at Issei. Sona made a demand. Don't say it. Don't you dare say it. Seraphal began to laugh loudly. Yasaka was also giggling in her sleeve. Akino, Asia, Kaneko and Kiba were all staring back at Issei with looks of sheer dread in their eyes. Not being able to take much more of this, Asia stood up. Ahem, Issei, is it true? Are you really married to that woman? I mean, isn't that so sudden, being in high school and all? Asia looked as if she was about to cry. All eyes were now on the little devil nun. Issei was frowning as were most of the other inhabitants of the dining room. Yusaka thought for a moment and then took a deep breath. Asia Argento, I've heard about you. You, like Issei have suffered a great deal, before being reborn as a devil. I know that you love him. I would be a fool to deny you of that which will soothe your very soul. Don't lose hope, for I know that my Issei loves you a great deal. Yasaka looks now toward Akino. And you, I understand. Akino Himahima, priestess, devil and, oh, I see. Akino flinches at what Yasaka might reveal. Oh, don't worry dear, it's not my place. But, I know that your important Kahai loves you, though you make him rather nervous a great deal of the time, fufufufu. Yasaka was showing a very warm expression which seemed to have an effect on the room itself. Kaneko rolls her eyes while showing disinterest. Yasaka picks up on this and widens her smile. Ah, yes, Kaneko Tuju. I think I may have been mistaken about you. My Issei thinks that you despise him, but that isn't true now, is it? Yasaka winks toward the Nako devil. Kaneko remains silent and simply shakes her head. Yasaka giggles a bit and then focuses her attention on Kiba, who stands from the table in respect. Yuto Kiba, era era. You really have a pure heart, don't you? You are very loyal to your master, however you are conflicted when it comes to your friend and important teammate. Yes, this is something that you will have to come to terms with, young devil. Yasaka took another deep breath and returned her usual half-crescent smile to her lips.
Mr. and Mrs. Hyodo were simply watching the exchange in conversation between their new daughter-in-law and these high school devils, when all of the sudden, the sound of the front door could be heard opening and closing. Issei shrieked in fear the moment he heard who was at the door. Noticing this, Yusaka pulled Issei closer into her with both arms. Mr. Hyodo, Mrs. Hyodo, I'm back from my week of hell. Could I possibly ask one of you for a big glass of water? The sound of Rias's voice began to amplify as she got closer. Hey, what are all of you doing in here? Rias walked into the dining room and immediately crossed her sweaty arms. Issei, what is this? Chapter 46, Sona's Chance, a high school DXD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 46, Crime and Scene, Hyodo Home, Kuo Japan. Moments ago, Rias was making a quick dash toward the Hyodo home. She was so excited to finally see her precious pawn once more. She had so many things to tell him. Having plenty of time to come up with a game plan, Rias came up with a chain of events that she would implement once her and Issei were reunited. Finally, at the front door of the large and altered home, Rias took a quick breather while going through with what she was going to say and how she was going to do it. Yes, there is a possibility that her pawn was dating her best friend and older aunt, but that could be overlooked for now. The red-headed princess understood her pawn's passion for wanting his very own harem, so this was clearly going to be the result of such obsession, however. As Rias was about to place her hand on the door handle, she recoiled instead. But, why them? Why am I not his first? I've spoiled him, given him purpose, provided him with every single pawn that I owned, I sleep with him, naked, so why? He loves breasts and I don't mean to brag, but hello. I've got the best around. Is this all because I didn't want to be his girlfriend in name? Well, that's stupid. I will admit, I was wrong to yell at him. I should have pulled him aside and had a civil conversation with him. I most certainly not should have threatened him, even if I didn't mean it. But still, he's with Sona and Seraphal. Who knows what could have happened during Golden Week. No, stop thinking that way. I literally accused him of fucking Sona and Seraphal when I went off on him. I need to stop. It's not as bad as I think it is. Okay, girl, let's do this, I hope he's back home now. Rias then turned the door handle. Present time, well, I'm waiting, Issei, Rias was now tapping her foot on the ground. Meanwhile Kiba, Kaneko and Asia looked very concerned. Akino, however, looked rather irate as the Grimori queen scowled toward the Crimson Princess's direction. Yasaka had a very serious expression as her warm smile completely vanished. Seraphal seemed to turn off her childish behavior and straighten up in her chair. This was a very rare side of the Leviathan Devil, a side that would terrify the strongest of supernatural creatures. Sona also had a bit of anger behind her usual stoic facade. It was in her eyebrows and stare, this look of sheer hatred. Kuno, who was being held tightly against Mrs. Hyodo also had a look of disgust as she stared toward Rias. Issei's parents had their continued bewildering expressions as before, however Goro Hyodo was showing a glance of suspicion when his eyes met with Rias's. Issei thought for a moment and then stepped forward, past Yusaka, Seraphal and Sona, while looking straight at Rias, doing every single thing he can, not to act on his instincts right now. The room went completely silent. Pulling his bangs out from his face, Issei stared Rias down with intensity. President, it's good to see you too. Rias took a moment to register what Issei had just said. She then looked around the room and got a better look at everyone involved. Sona, Seraphal, what are you two doing here? Also, who is this old woman? Is she a yokai or something? And that kid, she's one too. Issei, I need to know what's going on and I need to know now. Looking a bit woozy, Rias reached for the nearest chair to balance herself on. Seeing that something was off, Issei rushed next to Rias and took one of her arms and placed it over his shoulder. Rias's expression changed immediately as a blush suddenly appeared. With his other arm, Issei took hold of the chair and brought it closer toward the table, then he helped Rias into said chair. Are you alright, President? Issei showed a look of concern now. His angry demeanor all but disappeared. Issei, um, oh I'm alright. It's been a rough week is all. But I deserved what I got so I have nothing to complain about. Rias was leaning back in her chair while taking a few deep breaths. 
Feeling that the tension was cut in half, Issei nodded and walked back toward his chair. Everyone who was originally standing, also sat down. Sona took a glance at both her sister, Yusaka and finally, little Kuno. Each of them nodded toward one another. Taking a deep breath, Sona adjusts her glasses and focuses her attention onto an exhausted-looking Rias. Grimori, I am going to make this quite plain. Sona was showing her usual stoic expression. Rias looked over toward Sona with a look of apprehension. Hyodo Issei has become a very important person in my life. Sona paused for a moment to gather her wits. Most of the room made quiet gasps at Sona Citri's words, aside from those who already knew. Rias's eyes began to widen in shock. He isn't what all of you think he is. Sona covered her mouth with her own hands, realizing her own outburst. After a moment, the Citri heiress removed her hands, took another deep breath and continued. I don't mean to sound negative about this but it's really all because of you. Sona then turns her attention toward Kiba, Kaneko, Asia and finally, Akino. And because of you, before anyone could react, Seraphal cleared her throat. Placing a hand on a nearly crying Sona's shoulder, Seraphal showed a warm smile and spoke her mind. I love Issei too, my sister found him, alone. Each time, she offered to help him in. He took it. Now as far as Issei and I are concerned, let's just say that he's my greatest fan. The best. He was hurting and still took the time to give me a tour of your school. Also, to be honest, what he did for you, Rias, involving Riser Phoenix, I have to say, that was very sexy of him. Hee <laughs> hee. Sona nudges her sister as a blush is plastering her face. Sarah Tan, giggling for a moment. Seraphal changes her expression back to serious. Rias, you messed up, big time. You have the Red Dragon Emperor of all things, practically handed to you on a silver platter and what do you do with him? Really think about my question, Rias. And don't answer for now, I'm not done. We aren't the only girls that you will have to contend with. You asked earlier who, the old woman, is, didn't you? Well, Please mind your manners as you're speaking of the great Yusaka of Kyoto and her daughter, Kuno. They are Kitsune, nine-tailed fox gods, also, Yusaka is the queen of all yokai. Not to mention, my adorable childhood friend, Hihi. Seraphal's childish smile couldn't help but escape her lips toward the end of her speech. Yusaka, who had her eyes closed opens her golden eyes and stares blankly toward Rias as the fox queen's features show an aura of royal and very powerful energy. After gaining the speechless Grimori princess's attention, Yusaka proceeded to pull her notorious paper fan from out of her kimono sleeve. This action alone made both Seraphal and Kuno flinch suddenly. To their relief, Yusaka was simply fanning herself with the object of terror. Era Era, Rias Grimori, I've heard much about you, dear. Seraphal is correct regarding my introduction. I am Yusaka, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. Yusaka continues to fan her neck while looking straight into Rias. Rias looks at Yusaka with her jaw dropped. Her large and blue eyes looked to be watering while her expression was as solid as a stone statue. Rias, dear, I am Issei's wife. Yusaka now pauses while maintaining eye contact. Once again, a great deal of the room gasps at Yusaka's announcement. Now showing some hints of anger, the watery-eyed crimson princess stares back at the woman claiming to be Issei's wife. This can't be true, Yusaka, the Fox Queen. She's with Issei, like, that, no, 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 this can't be happening right now. And those, oh dear sweet Satan in hell, look at her chesticles. Rias's s cowlish stare focuses on the open chest region of Yusaka's gold and black kimono. What the fuck, this has to be a nightmare. Wake up, Rias, wake up. Yusaka tilted her head for a moment and then made a deep sigh. Oh, sweetheart, don't think like that. Era era, please calm your soul, for your sake and that of my HUSB. Rhea stood up immediately, her expression was cold and mechanical. Without any warning whatsoever, Rhea reached over the table while raising her left hand. She was aiming what looked to be a slap in the face, toward an at Yusaka, across from the other side of the table. Time stood still, Issei who was being silent during this whole interaction, had his attention on his master. Rias was leaning over the table, frozen in time, holding out her arm with a flat-ended hand, headed toward the face of his wife. No. Boost. 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 
boost, 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 boost. Explosion. Balance breaker. Balance breaker. After a blast of wind, accompanied by a burst of crimson and emerald light, standing in Issei's place was now a large and crimson-colored being, clad in scaled armor, with a pair of emerald and glowing eyes. Its armored and clawed hand was grasping at the arm of a very frightened-looking Rias Grimori. Yasaka stood up immediately and placed both of her hands on Issei's red-scaled arm. She had a look of both shock and admiration for what her husband had just done. Rias couldn't take her eyes off of the glowing pair of emeralds staring directly at her. Don't you ever touch her. You can punish me all you like. I'll take it. That's your right, as my master. But I swear to you, Rias Grimori, if you ever raise a hand against my family again. Seeing Rias in a state he's never seen her in while also finally realizing that his wife had hold of his arm, Issei apprehensively released the Grimori princess's arm. Still holding onto his arm, Yasaka took a quick glance around the room. All seemed fine, the Fox Queen's magic was successfully absorbing all of the excess energy flowing from Issei's balance breaker form. Meanwhile, Issei just stood in place staring down his master as she sloped back into her chair with a defeated look plastered to her face. Seraphal and Sona both stared at one another and then back at the situation in front of them. Akino, Kiba, Kaneko and Asia all looked on in sheer awe and fear at what was transpiring and more so, what their pawn teammate was capable of. Kiba took this harder as Issei was able to attain something couldn't. Not for lack of trying as Kiba trains vigorously with his sacred gear but has not managed to reach his Kahai's level, which somehow, he's achieved in a week's worth of time. Mr. and Mrs. Hyodo both had an arm around little Kuno as the two were standing on either side of the still-sitting fox princess. Mickey Hyodo looked toward her son, clad in some kind of red armor. At first, her expression was that of terror, but now, her features showed something more akin to a very proud, yet very confused parent. Goro Hyodo surprisingly continued to turn his attention from his crimson-scaled son and back toward the frightened Rias Grimori. Feeling as though his son's situation was amazing, the older Hyodo man couldn't help but wonder about Issei's alleged indentureship to this seemingly ordinary high school girl. Clearly, she was a devil, just like the rest of the children in the room, but was she good for Issei? From what he's seen, she must have done something terrible in order to get that kind of reaction from his usually perverted and lighthearted son. No, something happened. Issei's father was determined to find out, even if he had to traverse hell and back again, he'd get some answers. Kuno looked toward Issei with stars in her eyes. To the little fox child, this was her father and he was a shining red knight. He wouldn't let anything happen to her or her mother. To say that parents are God in the eyes of their child, well, in Kuno's case, she isn't half wrong. Chapter 47, Sona's Chance, a high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 47, Punishment. Scene, Hyodo Home, Kuo Japan. Issei. Both Asia and Akino spoke at the same time. Both girls then looked at each other. Asia spoke quietly even though she was still in shock from what had just happened. Akino-san, please, go first. By this time, Issei had his green glowing and helmeted eyes on both girls. Akino nodded at Asia as her own awe-like facial features changed into something a bit more stern. Issei, we should have been there for you. I am the most to blame here, considering I am the queen of this peerage, not to mention, I'm your senpai. I told Asia and Kiba to give you some space and that was the wrong choice. I'm sorry, Issei. Akino then stands from her seat and bows in Issei's direction. Before the red-clad Issei could reply, Asia stood from her seat. Eek, Issei, you saved my life. If it wasn't for you, I'd still be, you know. Instead of chasing after you, like I should have, the moment, that, happened, instead I just stood in place, like the coward I am. Please don't hate me. Asia began to sob into her hands. Kiba stood from his chair and walked over toward both Asia and Akino, showing a serious frown. The blonde devil took a moment before saying his piece. Hyodo, sorry man, Issei stood momentarily, looking at all three devils in front of him. Thinking it was time to apologize to his peerage, Issei still felt as though he had abandoned them. Even though that wasn't truly the case, he couldn't help but feel that way. 
As Issei was about to approach his three teammates, he felt something pulling on an appendage he wasn't quite used to yet. Realizing that this feeling was indeed his tail, the Red Dragon Emperor turns his head ever so slightly, only to see Kaneko. In his balance breaker voice, Issei speaks with some confusion in his speech. Kaneko, what are you doing? The petite and white-haired devil, who was usually very stoic and more so, very cold toward the Grimori Pond, was uncharacteristically crying. She had both of her hands, gripping on the armored and crimson-colored tail very tightly. Issei tilted his head in further confusion. Akino, Asia and Kiba all had looks of complete shock, seeing their rook in this state. That wasn't all. Rias Grimori, who was sloped in her seat also joined in with her peerage regarding the look of absolute disbelief. Not knowing what to do, Issei slowly turns his body around while moving closer toward Kaneko. Now facing and looking down at the crying girl, still holding tightly onto his tail, the Red Dragon Emperor of Domination, fell to one knee. Now at equal height, Issei waited patiently for Kaneko to finish crying. Sniff sniff, I'm sorry, pervert, I am just a bad person. I know I've always given you a hard time and I'm so sorry about it. It's just. Sniff sniff, it's just that you are always doing stupid things and it makes me so angry with you. But then, when I've already made up my mind about you, you do something like save the president from that riser snob. You just can't stay consistent now, can you? Kaneko slowly begins to release Issei's tail. But then you leave us, for a whole week, that makes me so mad. The Grimori Rook almost released Issei's tail entirely, that was until her last sentence. Now she is tightening her grip. Sniff sniff, then you come home and you're what? Married. You are now a father. You've finally got the harem you've always talked about. You just can't stay consistent. As Kaneko's eyes were shut tightly after her outburst, those same eyes opened widely. Still with Issei's tail in her hands, the petite Grimori devil was now being hugged by the armored and kneeling team. The room remained completely silent. Kaneko's eyes were still wide with an unreadable expression, but then, they relaxed a bit. Letting go of his tail, Kaneko instead wrapped her little arms around the Red Dragon Emperor and continued to cry. Slowly, the rest of the Grimori peerage, aside from a quiet and overwhelmed Rias make their way toward Kaneko and Issei. Then, the armored-clad teen felt multiple hands touching both of his shoulders. Looking back up, Akino, Asia and Kiba were smiling back down at both him and Kaneko. Each one was fighting back their own watery eyes. I'm sorry too, for leaving. I didn't mean to. It just sort of happened that way. I'm not mad at any of you. This is between Rias and me. Issei's green and glowing eyes were now focused on the seated princess, who refused to give him eye contact as she sat there with both of her arms folded. Knock knock knock. Mr. and Mrs. Hiodo both looked at each other confusingly. Then they looked down at Kuno, only to receive the same perplexed look as they recently gave each other. Who could that be? Mickey Hiodo was about to stand up to check the front door. Before Issei's mother could get the chance, Issei slowly rises while softly. Releasing Kaneko. Seriously. Of all times, we got someone knocking at the door and it has to be right now. Uh. The entirety of the dining room watched as Issei stomped from out of the room and into the hallway. Um, does he know that he's still in his balance breaker form? Sona asked a very logical question. Seraphal smiled warmly. Who cares, if they ask, he was just cosplaying in a costume. Near the front door. Knock knock knock. Yeah, yeah, hold your horses, I'm coming, geez. Issei continues to stomp in a grumpily fashion and reaches the door. Reaching for the door handle and carefully turning it, Issei immediately slams the door open. What? Ah, yeek. Xenovia, what is that thing? A twin-tailed brunette with violet eyes, wearing what could only be described as a strange and black cloak, was staring up toward Issei with a look of pure terror. Another girl was next to this one, also wearing that same type of black cloak. She had piercing and unyielding yellow eyes as her blue-colored bangs, with the exception of one single strand of green made her stick out like a sore thumb. Instantly, the blue-haired one took a step back and reached for something behind her back. Paying no mind, Issei turned his direction toward the inside of the house. Mom. Dad. You've got Mormons at the door, again. The brown-haired girl's purple eyes widened at hearing what this thing had just said. 
Now standing in front of her blue-haired compatriot, the cloaked girl looks closely at the armored figure. Issei Hyodo, is that you, in there? Slowly the brunette moved her face closer toward the helmeted face of Issei with a look of disbelief. Um, yeah, and who are you? I don't know any Mormons and to be honest, I really don't have the time to hear about your savior and lord, not right now. Issei was scratching his helmet trying to recall anyone he might know that looks like this girl. Issei. No way, it is you. It's me, Irina, Irina Shido. The now known Irina looked very happy now. Shido. The only Shido I knew was back when I was a kid, but that was a he and you're a she. Issei continued to scratch his head. Irina shook her head. No, that was me, I've always been the tomboy type, but honestly, you thought I was actually a boy. Really, I honestly had no idea. I mean, after you left Japan, I figured I lost a good buddy. But I never knew you were, well, Issei couldn't help but appreciate how his childhood friend has blossomed into a very attractive woman. The blue-haired girl simply stood still with a hand behind her shoulder, ready to pull something out. Everyone turned back and looked toward the hallway once a loud scream could be heard. No, ignoring his company at the door, Issei turned around and rushed down the hallway. Both Irina and Zenobia looked at one another and shrugged. Now both girls were following Issei into the home and through the hallway rather quickly. Toward the entrance area of the dining room, Issei stopped running in his tracks, only to see something that could only be described as very unlikely. Standing next to the dining table was what had to be Rias. She was small. Holding up her overly large tracksuit over her little body, Rias Grimori looked to be around the age of 10 years. She was throwing a fit as her screaming continued. Meanwhile, Issei's looks over toward Seraphal, Sona and Yasaka. Sona had a small grin on her face as did her older sister. Meanwhile, Yasaka had a stern look on her face as one of her arms was outstretched while grasping hold of her paper fan. Mr. and Mrs. Hyodo were still next to Kuno with more intense looks of shock and awe. Kuno had this expression of justice in her smile. Something clearly happened and it must have involved Yasaka, that's what Issei. Figured. Akino, Asia, Kiba and Kaneko all stared blankly toward a still crying child like Rias. Seeing Issei coming through the hallway, the crying Grimori princess immediately ran up toward the armored team, still holding onto her tracksuit. Issei. See what your, wife, did to me. Wah, wah. As the little Grimori was now hugging Issei's leg, he looked back toward Yusaka, who suddenly changed her demeanor into her usual pleasant and formal attitude. The Fox Queen then winked at Issei as her expression shifted into something more akin to mischievous. Issei looked back down at the crying red-headed little girl, then back up toward Yusaka. Um, what's going on here? Chapter 48, Sona's Chance a high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 48, Chibi Rias. Scene, Hyodo Home, Kuo Japan. Era Era, I can explain this very easily. Darling, Rias proceeded to act quite childish, after you left the room of course, naturally I could not allow this to go unpunished. With that, I say, let the punishment fit the crime. Rias wants to continue to act like a child, well, now she is a child and will remain so, until I've decided that she's matured. Era era, my word is law. Yasaka shows her authority through her expression of absolute seriousness. Issei, still clad in his balance breaker armor, looks back down at a still sobbing Rias, then back up and toward his wife. Hey, you know me better than that, Yasaka, Issei throws both of his clawed hands into the air as a sign of, no contest. It's not like I am going to argue with you. I totally get that you're the boss in all of this. And um, you're kinda scary when you look at me like that. I mean, maybe it's kinda hot too. Issei's arms fall back toward his sides as he now begins to imagine some erotic fantasies involving his wife, wearing a red and latex bondage outfit, with heels. As the red dragon emperor's head began to tilt sideways, Issei was using his eyes and imagination to picture his wife in such an outfit as she continued to give him that stern look. Yasaka's voice inside of Issei's perverted mind. Era, get on your knees and beg for it. Whip crack. Oh my, darling. Don't think those sorts of thoughts when company is around. If you continue to do so, I may be forced to spirit you away somewhere nice and quiet. Perhaps I may fulfill your desires. If you, B-E-G, F-O-R, I-T. 
Yasaka's attitude changed into that of a malicious and grinning fox. Issei was blushing intensely under his helmet. Damn it, Hyodo, she can read your mind. W-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A, finally, someone W-H-O can share my suffering. Shut up, lazy dragon. Hello, you have reached the voicemail of Why Dedrag Gok. To leave a message, press 1. To hear in Espanol, press dos. To mark as urgent, press twa. Issei was interrupted from his internal discussion when Rias began to tug onto his arm. Issei, look at me. This is completely unacceptable. I want my Oni-san. I want my mommy. Wa, Mr. and Mrs. Hyodo stood up as Kuno looked up at both of them. Rias, sweetheart, how about you calm down, maybe I can fix you a glass of warm milk. Miki Hyodo had a warm smile on her face. She then realized something and looked back down at Kuno. Would you also like a cup, sweetheart? Kuno was nodding quietly as Rias began to puff her cheeks out. Yusaka then looked at Seraphal and Sona as the three nodded in understanding. Instantly, the room seemed to calm a bit and eyes began to stare at the pair of unknown women in cloaks, behind Issei. Akino then grew a tick mark and pointed toward the two. Issei, I thought you said they were Mormons. I feel a great deal of holy energy coming from the two. Are they from the church? Kiba also looked a bit stern as his focus was on whatever the blue-haired woman had on her back. Kaneko also looked a bit on edge as both of her little hands began to clench into fists. Asia looked around the room nervously. Issei looked at either side of him, at each girl, then he slapped his hands together, remembering Irina. Oh yeah, oops, about them. Well, I don't know the one called Xenomorph, but the other one is. The one known as Xenobia began to grind her teeth. Xenobia, it's Xenobia, devil. Irina tilts her head, Issei, is it true, are you a filthy devil now? We were told that the Grimori house lives in this home in Kuo, but I couldn't believe that they would be living with you, Issei. But to know that you're actually a devil, well, that's really gross. Asia ran from her side of the table and in front of Issei and Rias. Placing her arms out, Asia spoke her mind. That's not very nice. There is no way the good lord would allow such behavior within his celestial ranks. It's shameful. Xenovia places her hand on the object behind her back. Kiba summons a thin and half-sized blade behind his back while watching her closely. Are you that nun, the one that betrayed the church? You or her, aren't you? The witch, Asia Argento. Xenovia scowled toward the small blonde devil. Irina placed an index finger against her chin. Oh. I've heard of you. How does it feel to no longer serve the great lord? Did you enjoy your fall to becoming a devil? Issei slowly used both of his hands to pull Rias off of his leg. At first, Rias refused until she understood that Issei was very serious. Finally she released him while taking hold of Asia's hand, then the two walked quickly back toward the table. Get out. Issei had his helmeted emerald eyes, focused on the two as his clawed hands balled up into fists. Not until our message is relayed, then, the hell with you filth. Xenobia pulled what was behind her back. It looked like a large two-handed sword with a pair of large and axe-shaped guards. Kiba screamed out like a madman. Escalibur. Rias screamed out as Mrs. Hyodo was now holding her back. Kiba. No, Issei watched, once again, in slow motion, as Kiba reached for what was behind his back. The Grimori Knight had a look that Issei had never seen before since meeting him, it was rage, unbridled and freshly tapped rage. As the knight began his move, slowly moving forward with his mid-sized blade pointed toward Xenovia, watching this play out at around 3 frames per second, Issei chose to make this insanity stop. Boost, boost, clank, clank, scraw aape, sizzle. In each of his clawed hands, the Red Dragon Emperor was holding onto both of the weapons wielded by Kiba and Xenovia. Xenovia's sword looked to be burning against the armored fist of Issei however he did not let go. Boost, 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 boost. Both Xenovia and Kiba looked toward the red-clad Grimori pawn as his grip became tighter and tighter. The sounds of both Issei's moans of pain and the cracking of steel could be heard. Yusaka, Seraphal, Sona, Akino. Kaneko and Asia all looked to be ready for anything, as their body language suggested deep concern. Irina, meanwhile, stood where she was, as her features suggested anxiety and deep fear for what was in front of her. I said, 
Boost, boost. Dot get, out. Kiba's blade shattered into dust as Xenovia's sword snapped into two pieces. Dropping what was the majority of Escalibur Destruction's blade, Issei immediately grabbed hold of his managed hand, the same one that crushed the hold sword. Xenovia looked at the hilt and guard of what used to be her sword, still holding it out as if it had its blade intact. The woman was in absolute shock as she began to back away while not showing her back toward a now crouching Issei Hyodo. Get out! Now on one knee, the red dragon. Emperor began to fling his tail about in a threatening manner toward the two girls as they continued toward the front door. As the front door closed, Sona and Seraphal were at Issei's side. Reset. Crimson and green light overwhelms the room temporarily. No longer in his red armor, Issei was crouching on one knee while holding his burned and sliced hand. Holy shit, that sword fucking sucks. It's like a light spear, but worse. Issei was grinding his teeth in pain. Sona pulled the teen's arm into her hand and studied the wound. Holy shit is right, you're lucky you know. Seraphal is helping the exhausted Issei to his feet as one of his arms is around her shoulder. On a good note, you didn't pass out this time, yay. You broke an Escalibur. Kiba was suddenly standing in front of Issei with a look of awe in his eyes. Issei looked at the large and broken blade, which was still laying on his dining room floor, then back at Kiba, whose eyes began to water. Yeah, well, Escalibur or whatever can suck it. If anyone points one of those things at my friends again, I'll just break that one too. Kiba began to laugh quite hysterically at that last comment. This got everyone's attention, those that knew him. Issei laughed along with Kiba. You can give me the history lesson later on the damn things, ha ha ha, all I know is that they fucking hurt like hell, ha ha ha, ouch. Asia ran over toward Issei and immediately began twilight healing without saying a word. Kiba, Seraphal, Sona and Issei all looked down toward her quietly. After a few moments of only the sounds of Asia's healing aura along with the occasionally slurping sounds coming from both Rias and Kuno as misses. Hyodo had prepared them with warm milk, everyone kept quiet. All of the sudden, a red and very familiar circle began to manifest on the hallway floor. This got everyone's attention as the circle began to glow brighter and brighter. Red flash. Oh wow, I wasn't expecting this many people. Standing from the circle was none other than Sirzex himself, accompanied by his wife, Graithia. Oni-sama. Rias placed her warm milk onto the table and darted toward her big brother at maximum tiny Rias speed. Rias. Sirzex tilted his head in disbelief as the pint-sized princess stood in front of the very tall man, looking up at him with her large and watery blue eyes. Graithia did her best to hold in a laugh while maintaining her stoic demeanor. Issei looked a bit worried as Sirzex had an unreadable expression on his face. Sona, Akino, Kiba, Kaneko, Asia and even Yasaka had looks of unknown anticipation on each of their faces. Graithia, my camera please. I must preserve these adorable memories at once. Don't worry sister, I'll have Graithia check my storage for your old middle school outfits. Your big brother has everything under control. Graithia, who is now smirking, hands her husband an old-fashioned looking Polaroid camera. Well that's all for now see you in the next part.